Amplify Science, Phase Change Unit, Chapter 2, Lesson 2.3, Evaluating Evidence and Claims. We begin in the lesson brief. Uh, any projections that you need are here. Uh, and then if there are any other resources you want to refer to that are digital, you might find them here as well. In Step 1, the warm-up, you're presented with two different models, uh, much like you were in the previous lesson. Uh, the first one is... Uh, cause of lake freezing, and the second one is cause of lake evaporating. What we want you to understand is we're now trying to explain what happened to the lake on Titan, and we originally presented with a claim that it either froze or it evaporated. So here's where we're going to start pulling together everything we've learned and try to explain this. By the end of this lesson, you're going to be writing an argument about which of these two claims you think is most supported. So I have uh, both models open. Uh, but before we go there, make sure that when you're done that you'll have your image. When you hand in the model, you'll see your image pop up here on the screen. And then you're going to make a selection uh, from the question below. Now before we actually start doing the model, I also want to make sure you understand the questions you should be asking yourself as you work through the model. For example, if the lake on Titan froze, what phase would it be in? What phase would it be in if it evaporated? Okay, what would cause the lake on Titan to either freeze or evaporate? Okay, keep going back to what you've been learning about phase change. So now we'll take a look at the model. And to no surprise, you've been building up to this all along. Once again, you're pulling in two phases into the two separate columns. You're editing each of the phases to match what you think the phase is and what's going on with the molecules and what appearance it has in the descriptor boxes. Again, do not go by mine. I'm just randomly picking. Once you've picked both sides, you also are showing energy change using the arrows and also using the hexagons to show whether energy is transferred in or out. Okay, so one more time with each of these models, uh, make sure you read the description at the top. Okay, uh, this, make sure that you're doing, this one is freezing. And the second one, which looks identical uh, when it loads here, and it is evaporation. Okay, so you should model each one of those things, hand them in, and you come back into each of the screens, you'll know that when you have your image uploaded and you've selected your answer. In step two, uh, it's designed to have a student-to-student -student discussion. Once again, if you're at home, uh, by yourself, you're going to have to have this discussion with yourself. Uh, you could grab other family members or you could communicate with students in your classes in different ways using your phone, your email if you want. Uh, but where they do begin this lesson is with a projection. You can find the projections in the lesson brief, of course. Uh, based on our investigations, we're closer to determining what happened to the lake on Titan. We have collected additional evidence which I'm now sending you. After you analyze the new evidence, please send me a written scientific argument about which claim you think this new evidence best supports. Remember to explain your reasoning. So this is Dr. Flores. We've seen mem memos from her all along through this unit, and this kind of outlines what we're going to do in this lesson, uh, that by the time you're done in step four, you'll be writing an argument. So the three claims, or sorry, the two claims that uh, she refers to uh, are here in these projections as well. Titan Lake claims that either the lake froze or it evaporated. And you're going to be analyzing which of those you think is, is best supported. Uh, but I also want to go back and mention and put on the screen uh, evidence cards. In class, you'd be given these evidence cards that it refers to in the card sort. Uh, and it refers to them down in the questions below as well. So you need to go on Classroom and click on this assignment, which... Uh, is available to you. And one of the links is a link to this folder in Google Drive, the Lesson 2.3 resources. Uh, the evidence cards are there in large format and regular size. I'm going to click on large because I want to be able to read it on the screen. So here is evidence card A, the Titan fact sheet article. Evidence card B, uh, the maps, and C, and D. So they give us this new information is what was referred to in the memo from Dr. Flores. She's sending us this uh, so maybe we can make more informed decisions about which of these two claims is, is the most correct. So again, you got to go into classroom, you got to click on lesson 2.3, 
the resource folder and open up the evidence cards to see them. Uh, if you want to print them out at home, you can. Otherwise, just have them there in an open tab. So now back to the lesson. You review those claims. You sort them as to which one you think best describes which claim. And you come in here and you vote. Now, this selection that you make also was intended to be a poll. Uh, if we were in class together, the most uh, the strongest piece of evidence would go here based on your votes. But we don't have that option, so we're going to uh, move on. In step three, there's a teacher-led discussion. Once again, we're not in a classroom together to discuss, uh, but I think we can lay out a plan here that you can follow at home. Uh, what you see presented to you is what happened to the lake on Titan. Uh, here's another graphic organizer of ours in which we are going to gather evidence that supports or refutes a claim. I know both of these things you've worked with before, right? Something that supports a claim points to and one answer being uh, a yes, but a refute is also pointing at a different answer saying a no. And no's are often even more useful than yeses. Uh, so this is what our goal is to eventually gather up those evidence cards, A, B, C, and D, or any other evidence that you find and putting in this organizer, knowing that the next step is going to be to structure this in writing. Uh, they do have something for us to look at in terms of a projection. No surprise here, your reasoning tool, we've seen it over and over and over again. At this point, we should be experts at it, that we need to identify evidence, connect it to a claim, and explain why. And here's what we're focusing on. Does it support a claim? Does it make us think one answer is right over another? Or does it rule out and tell us that the other answer is definitely not the one we should be choosing? Be sure, again, to complete as much of the table as you can before moving on to the writing. It's just going to make the writing go that much more smoothly. In step four, uh, we arrive at our writing a scientific argument. And before we begin, they remind us what a good structured writing and argument would look like. We have to clearly state a claim. And we're given choices. Uh, or choose one of our own, uh, describing the evidence and using reasoning to explain how the evidence supports the claim. In this case, in this case, uh, you're either choosing freezing or evaporating. I really encourage you to stick to one of those two claims. Uh, an example here, the evidence refutes the claim that molecules in a substance disappear or no longer exist when a substance changes phase. The textual evidence states that when a substance changes phase, the molecule's freedom of movement changes, but the molecules themselves stay the same. This is important because if water molecules always stay the same, they cannot disappear when the water changes phase. Notice the color here uh, points out which one of these, which statement is related to the claim, where the, which one is evidence, and which one is uh, reasoning. And again, this is not a sample answer to the question we're being asked. It's just a sample answer to a different question. When you move on to step two, here is your uh, space to write. And again, if you need sentence starters, they help you by providing a list here. Or uh, you can wordsmith your own. Word bank, these are terms that should be popping up in your writing. If you find that you're not using any of these, you might not be on the right path at this point. So here's your prompt. Dr. Flores would like an update on your research and what happened to the lake on Titan. Did the lake on Titan evaporate or freeze? So those are your two claims. Which one are you going to pick? After you clearly state your claim, explain how the evidence connects to the claim to support your argument. Remember to explain what happened at both the macro and molecular scale. Okay, Again, what they mean by that is don't just say it's this one or that one, uh, and this is why I think so. You need to go back and consider all the models that you've done, all the simulations you've used, and you need to relate that to your explanation. Uh, once you've done that, hand that in. In step five of the lesson, you have a self-assessment. Uh, we are at the end of chapter two. They want to know how you feel about what you know. So there are some questions for you to ask yourself and respond to that indicates your comfort and confidence in what you think you know at this point. When you're done with that, be sure to hand it in.